Welcome. My name is Dr. Teresa Bacon Bagley. I am a professor in the College of Health Professions at Grand Valley State University. Today we're going to talk about the symptoms that are associated with having a concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury. By the end of this module, you should be able to identify symptoms of a concussion, identify symptoms of post-concussion syndrome, as well as discuss the recommendations for recurrent traumatic encephalopathy. Recurrent traumatic encephalopathy is a condition that occurs from recurrent concussions. Before we talk about the symptoms of concussion, I'd like to define mild traumatic brain injury or concussion based on the Department of Defense guidelines, which also does include some of the manifestations. So here we go. Injury to the head as a result of blunt trauma, acceleration or deceleration forces, or exposure to blast pressure wave that results in one or more of the following. The first category of one or more of the following is any period of directly observed or self-reported symptoms, such as confusion, disorientation, impaired consciousness, memory dysfunction immediately before or after this injury, and a loss of consciousness less than 30 minutes. Again, it should be noted that these are symptoms that could be self-reported or observed by a witness to the incident. This definition continues on the next slide. And again, these are categories that fall under the injury to the head that results in one or more of the following. Observe signs of neurologic dysfunction, such as a headache, dizziness, irritability, fatigue, or poor concentration. In addition, there can be other symptoms that can be used to support the diagnosis of a concussion, but additional symptoms cannot be used to make the diagnosis without a loss of consciousness or a period of amnesia. So what are some of the common manifestation or symptoms of a concussion or mild traumatic brain injury? Well, this list here identifies the most common manifestations or symptoms of this type of injury. They include headaches, confusion, lightheadedness or dizziness, visual problems such as blurred vision, a bad taste in the mouth, fatigue or lethargy. Lethargy is kind of feeling tired all the time. Sleep disturbances, behavior or mood changes, amnesia or difficulty in concentration or thinking, as well as a loss of consciousness. Now these are the symptoms that describe the manifestations of an individual that has been struck in the head or exposed to a blast wave that meets some of the criteria of having a concussion. Now there's another condition referred to as post-concussion syndrome. As the name implies, these are symptoms that occur after the concussion. So a post-concussion syndrome is defined as the presence of manifestations that either persist after a concussion at least three months, or if they have new symptoms that present after the concussion. Again, there is a time frame from at least three months. Post-concussion syndrome, or PCS, is based on the presence of three or more of the following symptoms. Again, there's that time frame of persisting for at least three months. They include headache, dizziness, fatigue, irritability, difficulty in concentration and performing mental tasks, memory impairment, insomnia, which is the difficulty in sleeping, reduced tolerance to stress, emotional excitement, or alcohol. Now, the manifestations of post-concussion syndrome have been broken down into four separate groups. These groups are cognitive manifestations, physical manifestations, emotional manifestation, 
as well as sleep disturbances. Under the cognitive manifestations in the table that's shown on this slide, these manifestations include those under thinking and remembering, such as difficulty thinking clearly, feeling slowed down, difficulty concentrating, as well as difficulty remembering new information. The physical signs of post-concussion syndrome include items such as a headache, nausea or vomiting, balance problems, dizziness, fuzzy or blurred vision, feeling tired, having no energy, as well as sensitivity to noise or light. The emotional manifestations of post-concussion syndrome include irritability, sadness, more emotional than usual, nervousness or anxiety. And then the sleep disturbances associated with post-concussion syndrome include sleeping more than usual, sleeping less than usual, or even trouble falling asleep. Now, an individual that has post-concussion syndrome does not have all of these manifestations. They may have one manifestation or a combination of manifestations. They do not have to have every single one of these. Now, the common manifestations of post-concussion syndrome in military personnel sustaining a mild traumatic brain injury or concussion are the following, irritability, fatigue, and sleep disturbances. They've also found that soldiers who reported a loss of consciousness at the time of the concussion were more likely to have manifestations of post-concussion syndrome. Now there is an overlap of symptoms between a mild traumatic brain injury or concussion and post-traumatic stress disorder. Because of these overlaps, it's extremely important that the correct diagnosis is made. It is possible to have each one of these conditions independently without the other, or they can co-occur at the same time. Let's look at the overlapping symptoms. They include irritability, cognitive deficits, insomnia, depression, fatigue, and anxiety. And if you remember from the previous slide, the three most common manifestations of post-concussion syndrome in military personnel sustaining a TBI were irritability, fatigue, and sleep disturbances. All three of those fall in the overlapping symptoms of PTSD and having a mild traumatic brain injury. It's also important to note that some of the manifestations of post-concussion syndrome and mild traumatic brain injury also overlap with individuals that have chronic pain. These overlapping conditions need to be identified and explored in order to identify where the true disorder lies, whether the individual has a post-concussion syndrome or PTSD. One of the things you'll note is that there are some unique manifestations to PTSD that are not in a mild traumatic brain injury, such as flashbacks. Someone that is suffering from a mild traumatic brain injury and has post-concussion syndrome does not usually present with flashbacks. That's more of a unique sign of PTSD. There's been a lot of research on the cumulative effects of a concussion meaning having one concussion after another. Some of these studies have been done in athletes, where the athletes with a history of three or more concussions report significantly more symptoms and lower memory scores. Damage due to recurrent concussion has been called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Because of the effect of recurrent concussion, guidelines have been established for both athletes as well as military personnel. Before we look at what those guidelines are, I'd like to show a little video of individuals that have sustained recurrent concussions. Now the guidelines for recurrent concussions in the military are as follows. Documented recurrent concussions within 12 months on the first concussion, there's 
there really needs to follow the clinical guidance for uh, removing the individual, assessing um, their neurological status, et cetera. On the second concussion, there's a mandatory seven-day rest period following resolution of symptoms. That means if there's a headache that is two weeks after the concussion, that seven-day rest period occurs after that headache is gone. A third concussion requires a comprehensive neurological exam, requires that neuroimaging be performed, as well as neuropsychological assessment on items such as attention, memory, processing speed, executive function, as well as social pragmatics. In addition, there's a functional assessment that is also completed. Based on these findings, the individual may require more treatment before they are deployed. This ends the unit on the symptoms that are associated with mild traumatic brain injury or concussion.